with you which is going to be talking about decompression sickness it's going to go through all of the high yield points and it's going to hopefully give you guys a really big idea and at the end is make a quiz and hopefully i'm going to be dropping some mnemonics to help you guys along the way so basically um we have uh, specific factors that are going to be related to diving so three main factors which are going to affect it one is going to be the gases the second one is the first one is obviously going to be our um, our depth how deep we're going to go second one is going to be the gases and uh the third one is going to third one is going to be the factors related to di to the di uh, diver so you can imagine the diver itself the gases and then the factors that are related with it so first of all the fact physical factors will be the depth and whether there's going to be risk of the barrel trauma so the in any injury to the body causes there to be a change in the uh, which causes a change in the uh, barometric or the water pressure and it may, most commonly this barrel trauma would be occurring to our ear and this causes decompression sickness and there can be also uh, also the another factor that can influence this is also the water temperature so if there's cold water so then we can have a lot of heat loss the other other factors that is going to be there is going to be the breathing gas so the breathing gases are two types is oxygen toxicity and nitrogen necrosis so these are two types and then there can be the factors are related to the diver itself so the physical factors of the diver whether he's fit uh, fitness any other previous disorders the diver's training the equipment of the diver so these are going to be the main factors um there is also going to be a lot of other factors which is influencing this depth how deep will the um, how deep will the uh, diver be going so if the diver is going to go 10 meters then he, he is going to he or she is going to be um, suffering from 20 atmosphere pressure if the diver is going to go 20 meters then he's going to be having 30 atmosphere pressure if the diver is going to go 40 then he's going to go in uh, 50 atmosphere pressure so you're kind of getting the trick that over here the deeper you go you're going to have more pressure but it isn't like 10 10 equals to 1 plus 1 atmosphere pressure so two times that compared to the water level um, then there can be a gas compression gas compression can occur in air filled cavities lung cavities and these are going to be um, um, so for example when we are on water level water level means that when we are like right now all right now you and me are both at water level we are both above and any 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 place on earth any place standing on earth have uh, 10 meters we can have uh, 2.5 liters so normally our, our liter of our lung is 5 liters so 5 liters are highlighted here but then it can it can get compressed so compression is a really key word over here it can get compressed to 2.5 liters and it can also get compressed to 1.7 liters so that's really key there are going to be four main principles when it comes to decompression sickness. The four main principles are going to be the Bowles law, the Henry's law, the uh, buoyancy law, and the um, um, uh, Dalton law. So these are going to be the four main uh, key key um, uh, key key uh, 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 principles behind the decompression sickness. But we're also going to have breathing gas problems. So breathing gas problems are going to be the oxygen toxicity and nitrogen necrosis. Quickly go over buoyancy law. Buoyancy law basically basically forget up. Buoyancy law means that whether you are able to float within the ball water. So whether the object, whether the object is going to be completely or partially immersed, so completely or par partially immersed in a fluid is buoyed, and it and it emerges in, in the fluid and uh, by a force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. So the key word over here is object. It is either like partially or it's completely boiled into the fluid in which the weight is going to be counterbalancing uh, the fluid. So the, 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 the fluid is bowed by force to the weight of the fluid and displaced by the object. So um, the, diver's, the diver's body, the wetsuit, um, change their volume uh, due to d d depth. This results in a change of buoyancy. The diver strives for neutral buoyancy and compensatory. Uh, and other words, compensatory. Um, not to show what new yeah. so the, the diver is trying to get he, the, the diver's aim is trying to get neutral by buoyancy neutral buoyancy basically means any sort of compensation any sort of way that in which he is trying to compensate for or being in the water we can also have bowels law bowels law is going to be pressure times volume which equals to a constant so very very simple so whenever we have pressure the volume will be the same we can have henry's law henry's law is the increase in quantity of gas by tissues of the uh, human body increases so basically um uh, henry's law is whenever we increase the pressure the quantity of gas absorbed by the tissues of the body increases so uh, to make it very simple what is henry's law uh, pr pressure 
increases and gas absorbed increases by the way i didn't completely uh, show um, how does boil a law affect diving so um pressure times volume equals to constant so free diving whether that be ascent or descent there's going to be a risk of lung squeeze so there's going to be any sort of compression on the chest cavity that occurs when breath uh, breath holding the, 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 the diving underwater during the descent um during the descent an increase in the pr pressure causes the air spaces and gas pocket to in the body to become compressed so when we're going to be descending during the de the when during the uh during the de de descent an increase in pressure causes the air space and the gas pockets to become compressed scuba scuba uh, but when we're going to be ascending so in scuba diving there's also a risk of barotrauma which means that there's going to be any sort of a uh, so barotrauma i want to draw this in your mind any sort of injury to the body when there's going to be changes in barometric air or pressure air or pressure so that's very very key and i'm going to be giving you guys a mnemonic at the end of this uh, video so please make sure to check it out um dalton i talked about dalton law dalton law is very when there's mixture of particles it equals to the volume of the particles so when we're going to be mixture mixture key word here is mixture of breathing gases the concentration of individual components of the gas is proportional to the par partial pressure so when when you mix gases the concentration uh, the uh, concentration of the uh, components uh, the concentration of the components of the gas mix is is proportional to the uh, to the par partial pressure so when we have going to be a gas mix, which is going to be, there's going to be the concentration of the mixture is going to be proportional to the uh, pressure. So if you put five concentration, you expect five particles to cause pressure. Uh, O2 toxicity, O2 toxicity is very, very simple. When does it occur? First of all, I mean, this is really key at 1.4 atmospheric pressure. Very, very important. Mechanism, mechanism is easy. You're generating free radicals. Free radicals are damaging the lipids. So the, basically this is going to be uh, by O2 and we're going to be donating one or two electrons to be from a reactive oxygen species. And once these species, they produce a super, uh, a super oxide anion uh, and this can then lead to damage of the DNA and the more reactive in the hydroxyl damaging the chain of lipid peroxidation of the unsaturated lipids in the cell membrane. So you're making your you're, you're very simple O2 toxicity, uh, it, it loses, loses electrons. It uh, forms reactive oxygen species. When it's spawned oxygen species, it can then go and damage DNA or cell membrane. Cell membrane. Very, very easy. Uh, symptoms. Symptoms can be tingling. Not only tingling, we're going to get focal seizures. Focal seizures means any sort of hyperactivity of our brain, which leads to motor or sensory or psychomotor problems. We can get limb twitching, vertigo, nausea, vomiting, tunnel vision. So for this, also, I'm going to be giving you guys a mnemonic at the end. So mnemonic uh, at the end. So make sure to stay tuned for that. And the 10% are going to be uh, either seizing or fainting. And the way to you want to prevent this is either especially train them for oxygen toxicity or we give them a special gas mixture, which kind of fights this oxygen toxicity. It doesn't allow there to be too much oxygen. So nitrogen ne ne necrosis, ne ne narcosis, ne nitrogen necrosis is going to be a high amount of uh, pressure of, so high pressure of nitrogen, too much that's basically nitrogen necrosis it's too much nitrogen or high pressure of nitrogen so i'll make it proper yeah what's the symptom symptom is very 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 similar to someone who is alcoholic intoxicant you can remember this way the alcohol is a, is a chemical so is nitrogen a chemical so when you're putting chemicals into your body you're going to be getting uh alcohol intoxicity what alcohol intoxicity you're going to have slurred speech you're not going to have a complete alert alertness possibly nausea vomiting um yeah so uh, possibly a loss of temperature so hypothermia uh, we're gonna have poor judgment disorientated often euphoric again uh, someone who's drunk uh, fail to, uh, to to surface on the time uh, uh, or even uh, swim deeper thinking that they're going to go to the surface so that these guys are not able to make it to the surface and uh, and this is really usually happens around 30 meters so prevent this we, we prevent them to, uh, for deep dive we give them a special mixture of gases so we give them helium which will really help them to prevent from nitrogen necrosis so what, first one, let's talk about the big boy, the decompression sickness, which is the title of the video. So the title of the video is going to be decompression sickness. So over here, we're going to be having heart defects. One of the most heart defects is a patent foramen ovale. What does that mean? Very, very simple. 
out of obviously all of us medical students we know that there is going to be uh the heart has four main chambers so two over here the atrias and then two really uh, sorry uh two um really big ones such as the ventricles such as the ventricles so uh, normally obviously there's a wall between everyone but let's just imagine that there is going to be no wall over here when there's going to be no wall between these two we have a patent uh patent uh for 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 ovale and um, th this can um, uh, so this uh, this will allow the blood to go through and uh, w the the main thing is that the bl the blood comes from the right atrium was right ventricle and from here it goes to the lungs so i'll just draw here a very bad diagram of the lungs let's just imagine this is the lungs okay alveoli it goes to the uh, lungs okay and the lungs can filter out the uh, the the nitrogen bubbles so uh, you can imagine kicks nitrogen nitrogen okay but the problem is when you have put in for mobile the blood is not going to the lungs it's just going here and from here it's going to the system it's going to the whole human body so from here going left ventricle ventricle is going to the whole body so that's a major problem so um we can also be getting some dehydration cold water i'm not too sure about the mechanism for this uh so uh do you excuse me there so decompression type one and type and type two will be talking over here so type one really really simple we're going to get three main problems musculoskeletal things when we get musculoskeletal things we get bends when it affects our lungs we get chokes and uh, when these nitrogen bubbles and the mechanism behind this is that as we, this this occurs when we're ascending so you can imagine this guy's ascending and uh, uh and when he when you're going to be ascending um then pressure is decreasing obviously like like we spoke over here in the depth uh, when we spoke about the the in the depth uh in the depth uh, uh video um um yes um um so pressure as you go up your pressure is decreasing just two atmospheric compared to 50 over here um and when you're going to be going up you're going to be getting but your your nitrogen bubbles are going to now be able to have more pressure so because because outside is not really compression yet so you're going to get more pressure and that can lead to the uh, nitrogen air emboli. So air emboli can go and block the supply of the blood to the muscles and it gets bent. And then there can be pains in, in the joints. And then there can be itching in the skin and swollen lymph nodes. And there can be rash and fatigue. Um, and there can be not, and they cannot be life threatening. Mm -hmm. So that's the good thing. But here's the bad boy. This one, this one is like Loki from Avengers. Loki. It's not very life-threatening. You guys get itching, skin motiles, swelling, lymph nodes, um, rashes, fatigue. And this one is going to be like someone like um, Thanos. This one is a really bad sickness. Type 2 is really bad. So four things it affects. Brain, spinal cord, lungs, and... Uh, brain, spinal cord, lungs, and... Um, um, skin. No, uh, in, inner ear. Inner ear. Very important to say inner ear. So, yeah. So this is going to be mainly affects... The neurological symptoms range from mild numbness to paralysis and death. And, and the spinal is going to be especially vulnerable and weak. But uh, this one is going to have spinal cord involvement. So spinal cord involvement, we get numbness. Numbness means just loss or lack of sensation. We can also get tingling. Tingling means any sort of abnormal sensation. We can get weakness in arms and legs and weaknesses. Uh, and, and we can get inability to control the urination. We can get uh, brain problems. So we can get a uh, headache, confusion. Uh, we can air problems so air problems can be any sort of uh, uh, any sort of ringing in the air ringing of the air can be tinnitus and we can get vertigo vertigo means when we have nausea vomiting and we also have loss of balance why is that the inner ear because the inner ear has the vestibular which is really important for the balance like i said vertigo is lack of balance so the inner ear has um vestibule which controls our balance and hearing loss obviously that can occur lung problems we're going to get cough chest pain normal stuff chigosing worsening and the difficulty of breathing we call this chokes we call this chokes severe cases can learn to shock and can shock can obviously lead to death i would like to talk a little bit about the management the late manifestation so this is going to be like the um this is going to be like the super super villain so you can imagine him being the, the dark side like this guy is going to be the dark side and and in this this guy we're going to gain this baric osteonecrosis so this means death of the portion of the bone uh due to obviously um the air emboli um blocking the artery um uh, neurological problems diagnosis is doctor's evaluation ct mri history is very very important 
uh, treatment, uh, you want to you want to kick away oxygen, kick, kick away nitrogen, nitrogen. You want to give them nitrogen. so give the oxygen. Hyperbaric therapy basically means hundred hundred percent oxygen and recompression sickness means treatments are usually given once or twice daily for three hundred minutes and more and most often one hundred percent oxygen is going to be given at two point three to three atmospheres of pressure. Plan we we give them a plan of diving. We give them deco spots so it pauses in in, in, the, in the driver's ascent. And that means no uh, stops of the nitrogen um, would not, not expand and make bubbles. Time. So the timing of the symptoms is going to be uh, three. Uh, initially, they're asymptomatic uh, breathing problems. Uh, approximately 80%, they, 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 they come at 80% uh, of the, I think, the symptoms uh, of the symptoms at, at, uh, at 30 minutes. Uh, and, uh, um, and then 90% uh, of the symptoms at uh, three hours. And one percent of the symptoms uh, at, at six hours. So that's going to be key over here. A decompression sickness. We're going to be getting prevention de pre pre uh, decompression sickness. Plan the dive. Slow the velocity of ascent. Ascent is key over here because decompression sickness occurs in ascent. Because in ascent we have less pressure. Very very key. Uh, make sure the uh, there is going to be no deco dives. Pause the diver's ascent. Decompression stops. Back up breathing gas six or 10 meters depth. Uh, there can be a breathing gas, low risk of decompressive illness. And that's about it for that. What is the quiz? So here are some quizzes to check whether you guys understood. So what are, um, what are two f physical, physical factors influencing? That can be first of all pressure and temperature. So sickness, anything like that, decompression sickness uh when do um nine when do 190 percent of uh of symptoms when the symptoms occur uh six hours th three three hours post dive what is the complications we get dysbaric dysbaric osteonecrosis necrosis and we can get uh, which is going to be necrosis of the bone okay mnemonic time this is going to make your life 20 times easier mnemonics um, mnemonic uh, mnemonic of of the symptoms so we're going to be getting t it's called ttt so uh, tingling tunnel vision um, then what is other mnemonic I can give you guys is going to be of the barrel barrel trauma. Imagine B and P are very similar sounding. So barrel uh, trauma occurs when there is changes in the barrel, uh, barrel, uh, barrel uh, metric uh, pressure or air pressure or, or the water pressure. So that's going to be key. These are going to be two mnemonics. Guys, uh, if I forgot any mnemonics, please let me know in the comments down below. I will come and give those mnemonics back. And um, hopefully you guys liked it. If you guys like this, please subscribe. And hope to see you guys next time.